Welcome back to Bitsight for Wealth. Today, Matt and I are gonna go through and recap 2023, as well as show you our predictions for 2024. back in studio together for the first time in a long while. How are you doing? It's good to have you back down under, mate. Um, I'm fantastic, actually. Yeah, so I've had a cracking year. It was so busy with the run into Christmas. I'm glad I've got a couple of weeks off. Yeah, good stuff. No, me too. I'm uh, glad to be home, visiting family, hanging out again, feeling a little bit of normality before I head back on over to Bali for a massive 2024. Yeah, I think next year's gonna be huge. Yeah, I agree. I, um, I wanted to sit down with you today and I guess record a bit of a recap of 2023, go over Finsightful and I guess what we've done throughout the year um, before we jump on into our predictions for 2024 and how we think the channel, the business and the world is gonna progress. Yeah, I think 2023 was a learning year. Um, definitely a year of us trying to figure out what the flavor of the channel was going to be. And then in terms of investing environment, it was a very interesting place because we had five interest rate rises in Australia. Um, consecutively something like 13 over the last two years. So we've gone to a sort of all time high interest rates since sort of 2008. But investment markets in terms of equities have performed extremely well. And if you invested in any type of tech in the FANG or in the NASDAQ, then you know you saw sort of 30, 40, 50% returns for the year. Also property outperformed. So all the doomsdays that were sort of talking about property market exploding in Australia just didn't happen. We saw a small sort of decline, I guess, through the middle of the year, but that peak to trough was maybe five to 10%. Then rental yields have just driven up significantly and you've seen some areas across Australia grow sort of 15 to 25 percent so it's been a bit of a mixed bag you really had to be on the ball to take advantage of some of the opportunities that are out there that was going to be my next question is it was that predictable did we expect this year to play out like that equities no so equities I thought would have been a lot calmer but there was also a flight to safety in terms of investors wanting to buy into companies or enterprises that had strong balance sheets and also strong income. And realistically, the only companies that had that were those huge diversified tech businesses. The rest of the world literally muddled along. So the Magnificent Seven, it was absolutely flat. So some of my clients that were invested in FANG, uh, they won on the actual equity selection or the concentration of investing in Facebook, Apple, Amazon, and Google. And that was Netflix, there's an N in there. But they also went on their foreign exchange risk in terms of the Australian dollar lowered its value to the US dollar significantly. So they had even a boost to those um, returns. So what we did with the majority of our clients was then sell them out of those particular assets and then put them into a similar investment, but hedged so that they don't have any foreign currency risk. Because see, with the Australian dollar where it is now, it can only get worse against the Uh, US dollar if we're going to add more money because it's at all time lows. As interest rates start to decrease in the US, then the Australian dollar will come closer to parity with with the US dollar, particularly if the US starts to reduce rates a lot faster than what we do here in the in in Australia. So yeah, there's there's some interesting thematics to be watching uh, going into 2024. But for me, I think it's going to be a bullish year. I think you're going to see the property market perform admirably again. I think the equity markets are going to muddle along in in the most part, um, but you're still going to see some outperformance of those big tech stocks. Um, But you could also see a decline in those tech stocks of sort of 15 to 20%. So if you see a big shock to the system, then you could see a lot of profit taking on those particular companies. So yeah, lots to watch out for. And then yeah, there's a new sector that I'm quite excited about. Yeah, the, uh, the new branch of Insightful, I'm excited about it as well. I think, yeah, that's a pretty good summary of 2023 so far, to be honest. I wouldn't add a whole lot. My only observation is that it seems quite interesting that when, like, obviously interest rates have been increasing and there's been a lot of talk about that creating such a big impact on people's disposable income and whatnot. But it's interesting that the fundamentals have still been performing quite well, like property is doing well and stocks indices are doing well, which is for me, like, I don't know, growing up over the last few years with so much talk about tech and AI and crypto and all these new buzzwords and whatnot, (laughs) it's interesting that what has held true still continues to hold true and hold its value. Yeah, look, it's with equity markets and public equity markets, 
the way that the system has been created is bringing a lot of stability. And then, so what I mean by that is particularly in Australia, you know, we have 9% of the nation's income or oh, sorry, 10% of the nation's income being invested through superannuation into public markets. So you have this flow of capital going into equities in a diversified manner on literally a weekly, monthly basis. So that does allow for those companies or those indices to continue to, to grow over time. And then when you have a look at property, property is just a fundamental supply demand. Uh, coming out of COVID, you had builders going bankrupt, cost of construction 300%, uh, development approvals are like pulling teeth. Mm -hmm. So everything is being backed up against that. So it's just, there is no new supply of property coming onto the market. We had no immigration coming through uh, COVID. We have now had huge amounts of immigration coming in in 2023, I think it's like 500,000 new Australians hit the country. About 250,000 hit Melbourne and Sydney because that's typically where people move to. And then a, a, about a three to five year period is when they sort of then start to move to some of the other areas. But yeah, that's put a lot of pressure on, on housing prices and then also yields. A lot of Aussies came home in during COVID. So there's just a lot less rental property available. And then so if rents are high, people want to invest because they get good yields. Right. It all makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> in hindsight, maybe with 2020, with 2020 hindsight, everything can be explained perfectly. <laughs> and it's still good, Luke. We love it. And um, similar for, I guess, the predictions for next year as well. Like we've obviously been looking quite closely recently at what we want to do in 2024 in terms of our own channel and where Insightful is going. From day one, you and I have said that we want to build this as a portfolio that people can follow along with. Um, and I think we're pretty close to being ready to pull the trigger on that. So I'll let you announce the plan for 2024 off the back of what yours and I guess my own predictions are for the next year as well. Great. So the sector that I'm most bullish on or the sector that I think is going to perform the best in 2024 is going to be the crypto industry and having a look at the different protocols and how they're going to be fit in, fit in together to build Web3 and then also some of those un individual sectors underneath that like DeFi or decentralized finance and uh, gaming and how you're gonna be able to earn money or crypto to be when you're actually playing games. So I think that's gonna revolutionize uh, those areas. And I think what's also really interesting is the idea of a decentralized internet or Web3 where no one can tell anybody else that they can and can't post content on a website. So that whole decentralized social media, I think is also going to be a very interesting move forward and then how all that works. And when you think about some of these different protocols that have been released, like they're doing transactions um, per second more than now Visa, MasterCard and Amex. So the technology has gone in leaps and bounds and the companies and protocols that have survived this most recent, what we call crypto winter, um, are really set up to thrive going forward. And there's a few things that are gonna be happening next year, which I think are going to drive institutional capital and investment into some of those core crypto coins or protocols and how that's then going to bring retail confidence into some of those smaller coins. So we're gonna see, I think a very, very exciting 2024 and probably a, a quite bullish run for about three to four years. Mm, exciting. And we're at the start of it, ready to jump on board. Uh, well, we might be, or we might not be. <laughs> this could just be a false spring. Um, and one of the key drivers of that is really going to be the approval of the Bitcoin spot ETF. So BlackRock, Van Eyck, and a couple, a couple of the other big um, banks in the US or global banks have all been applying to have this spot Bitcoin ETF created and thus far the SEC has stopped it. Um, I don't understand why that's actually occurred because there are actually there are already um, Bitcoin futures ETFs available. So if you think about the spot price, which is the actual price as at today against a futures contract, futures are leveraged and there's more risk. So those two things don't make sense. So if it's not going to be approved in the first quarter of, of next year, I think it's only a matter of time until these ETFs will be. And then you're gonna have probably an ETF which is gonna be focused on just Bitcoin. You'll have, and Van Eyck has got an application in for an ETF which is going to be just uh, Ethereum. And then you'll probably have some ETFs that come out will have like five to 10 of the core coins by their largest market cap. Similar to like an index of the S&P 500, you'll have a index of the top 
10 crypto coins or protocols, however you want to. I don't necessarily like to call them cryptocurrency or coins because it's not. Currency makes you think about fiat money. And when I think about the crypto world, I think of them as protocols and software and solutions to real world problems. And this is sort of the next um, evolution of, of humanity going from you know, industrialization into then all tech. So yeah, it's gonna be a very, very interesting. What do you think, Nathan? I mean, it all sounds wonderful. I think it makes more sense to me now to talk about investing in the tech as opposed to investing in the currency, exactly how you just explained it. Because I think what my hesitation was back in 2021, 22, when I did dabble a little bit in crypto, my hesitation was that I feel like I'm just buying hype. Like there's no actual value there. I don't understand yeah. what the value is, um, especially with a lot of the NFT projects and then the like meme coins where people, <laughs> are, you, yeah, which some have actually done all right and turned into somewhat core coins. Like look at Dogecoin, for example. Yeah, so um, I haven't looked into Doge. Um, I, at the beginning, it was always just a bit of a meme. And I, so I never really got uh, behind it because I didn't actually see the use case behind, behind the actual coin. But I think some of the developers that have been working on that one have actually started to build in a protocol behind it. Um, so it can become useful, but I'm not across that at the moment. It's one of the things that are long on my list that I'll be uh, researching going forward. But the, the core I guess protocols that I'm really interested in is um, so Bitcoin, that's your digital you know, s store of value, your digital gold, I guess you can think about it. And then you've got Ethereum, which is sort of your gas and your petrol. Uh, that's what's going to fuel Web3. So that's a piece of software that is actually decentralized. And then there are lots of layer one businesses or coins that are then built, or sorry, protocols that are then built on top of the Ethereum network. And then you have uh, another network that you've got sort of like then Polkadot and Solana that are looking to fuel the whole Web3 technology moving from where we are now into the future. Um, and then thinking about that, then if they're the core ones, well then what are going to be the smaller, most successful businesses or enterprises or software solutions that are going to be built on those particular um, layer one technologies and that's going to be like gamify decentralized finance and then now that they can mint nfts on both bitcoin um and then they can also do it on well they do a lot of it on ethereum already but they can also do it on solana the price of now minting an nft is going to be cheaper or as cheap as actually producing tickets for events in the real world so yeah i think it's going to be very very interesting to see how people who have their own music or art or build communities they then utilize some of these environments to bring everyone together into the one place. Talk to me about timing. Why now? Uh, Bitcoin's come off its highs about 80%. So uh, it was trading 80% um, higher uh, 12, or no, sorry, about 24 months ago. And it's sort of had a bit of recovery over the last 12 months. But also what's sort of all happening at the, at the time now is we have a Bitcoin halving coming up in April. So sometime in April, Bitcoin miners will halve. So now we have a convergence of a couple of different things all at the same time. We have the SEC looking at approving an ETF which is going to allow spot Bitcoin to be invested in. And then what that is going to mean is a lot of institutional investment is going to come in through that ETF because still buying and owning Bitcoin has all of these difficulties for the everyday person, but also for institutional investors. Like big companies are not going to have a cold wallet. If you don't know what that is, we're going to create a video and explain what that is to protect their Bitcoin, where big institutional investors are not going to have that kind of security measures in place to be able to do that or just have an allocation of 5% of their portfolio. So once this ETF is available, you'll see a lot of institutional investment coming into that space and then supply demand that will actually drive up the price of Bitcoin. And then on the other side of supply, you have the Bitcoin halving coming up in April 24. So what that means is every time a miner mines more Bitcoin, rather than getting six, they're only going to get three. So that halving means there's going to be less supply of new Bitcoin available. So therefore, that's going to be a second thing that's going to drive up well, the supply demand ratio. So the halving is definitely going to happen. If the ETF happens at the same time or just before, you're going to see a huge spike in the Bitcoin price. And then that will then drag up all of your other coins along with it. Because whenever 
if anyone sees a price of something go up, they then also look for all of the things around that to actually go up in value as well. And it will also bring a lot of confidence back into the, I guess, network of the crypto space and those protocols. Mm, exciting. So do you think just based on that, it's worth investing in Bitcoin or it's worth looking into the ones around it rather than putting your money into Bitcoin itself? So I think with anything that you want to invest into, you need to have an understanding of what you're actually doing. So if you, if this is the first time you've ever heard of cryptocurrency or Bitcoin um, in this video, then you need to actually go and do a fair amount of work and actually have a thorough understanding of what it is that you're investing into, whether it's the core Bitcoin, Ethereum, or any of the other protocols underneath that, you need to have an understanding of how they work and the differences between them. Or if you're simply having a passive view, like an index investor, then you say, well, 5% of my portfolio, I'm going to invest on an ongoing basis. You might put 5% of your portfolio into Bitcoin this month, and then 5% in, um, another 5% into Ethereum the following month, and you just continue to do that. And don't worry about what the price does, just continue to dollar cost average into it. And then if you want to become a little bit more sophisticated, you can watch more of our videos and we're going to teach you how to stake and do a whole lot of other different things. So you can increase your yields on your Bitcoin. So what that means is you can actually earn an interest in the crypto that you've actually staked. But there's gonna be another whole video on all of that. We won't do that today. So if you haven't already picked up on the theme, 2024 for us, cryptocurrency is gonna be a massive theme. Now we're talking content about crypto, learning in general. We're also gonna be starting a portfolio that will be trading and growing as an investment portfolio live uh, using crypto. Uh, we also have plans to use the capital from that portfolio to go into real estate and real world investing as well. Uh, but all of this is down the line in 2024. Right now, what you need to know is that it's gonna be a big year. We're both excited and we feel like we're at the start of what could be a really exciting time for the crypto space and our own investment journey. So if you do want to follow along and make sure you don't miss out as well, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below, like this video, share it to your friends and family because who doesn't love seeing everyone else do good as well. Just before you go, if you're thinking about getting into crypto and you want to get everything set up so that you're in a space that you can actually invest some of your capital, remember not anything. And if you're investing in crypto, only invest what you can afford to lose. We're going to have a referral code to SwiftX, which is an Australian-based um, cryptocurrency exchange where you'll be able to sign up an account in less than 30 seconds and then get started. So there'll be a referral code in the show notes. Please hit that and we're going to do a separate video showing you how to set up an account and the benefits of using SwiftX against some of the other platforms that are available. Uh, thanks for an awesome 2023, Matt, and see you in 2024. Thanks, buddy. So we did an episode on the Magnificent Seven. Yeah, you take those seven out of the S&P 500 and the other 493. Uh, <laughs> Must be the end of the year. Too many beers at Christmas. And then they also won on their foreign, 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 foreign exchange. I can speak English. Do this again if I can't. <clears throat>